Dear listeners, welcome all of you who are interested in electroencephalography, EEG, and event-related potentials, ERP, techniques, and all of you who are interested in life cycle data. Welcome to the second part of our video tutorial that provides you with the first phases of EEG data life cycle. More specifically, it provides you with description and design of EEG and ERP experiment with the emphasis on the used hardware and software infrastructure, especially the infrastructure that is suitable for collection of EEG and ERP data. We will also introduce our neuroinformatics laboratory and specific experimental devices we use, and give an example of a stimulation protocol. For those of you who are beginners, we recommend first listening to the first part of our tutorial. In the first part of our tutorial, we introduce the whole EEG data lifecycle that you can see in the picture. It describes the phases through which the EEG or event-related data pass during their life. In this part, we will focus on the initial phases, experiment planning, and part of the experiment design phase, we will create an experiment prototype. Data security and related laws and regulations that have to be taken into account during the experimental design phase will be described later in the third part of our tutorial. The main goal of the planning phase is to establish a plan how to collect, store, annotate, manage and share the data throughout the li life cycle. This phase, of course, overlaps to a large extent with the experiment design phase that results in an experiment prototype. In our neuroinformatics group, we have been developing the hardware and software infrastructure for research in EEG and ERP techniques. And this infrastructure is built independently of the specific EEG or ERP experiment. In the planning phase, we have to decide what hardware and software infrastructure will be used for collecting, storing and managing data, which data formats and metadata terms are suitable for data description, or if there is a necessity to purchase, develop or integrate any new or updated hardware device or software tool. During the planning and experimental design phases, we should at least have a general idea on how to orchestrate the experiment as a whole while evaluating possible time, location and experimental constraints. In the experiment design phase, we have to design the experiment itself and harmonize it with all related laws and regulations. Designing an experiment means to transform our scientific goals to the description of a real experimental procedure, decide which methods and techniques are suitable to use, in our case we focus on EEG and ERP techniques, to respect overall advantages, disadvantages, principles, strategies and best practices of each technique, and finally define and develop an experimental protocol, usually in the form of experiment prototype. To do it, Various software tools can be used to create and later run the experiment. This experiment prototype, together with the overall project plan resulting from the planning phase, must be approved by the Ethics Committee. Having introduced our current position in the EEG data lifecycle, we can now present an outline of the second part of our tutorial. At first, we describe what is happening in experiment planning and design phases. Then, we will familiarize with the hardware and software infrastructure for collection of EEG and ERP data, neuroinformatics laboratory at the University of West Bohemia, and specific hardware devices and software tools used there. Then, we will present experimental design of the brain-computer interface project, Basil, and give you opportunity to take a short quiz. Let us look first on the experiment planning phase. In our case, it doesn't include only a specific plan with respect to the next experiment, but also the long-term building and operation of the neuroinformatics laboratory and purchase, development, integration, testing, operating and maintenance of the hardware and software infrastructure for experimentation in the field of EEG and ERP. This infrastructure is described later in our tutorial and includes, for example, a hardware device for cognitive research, EEG base, the web-based portal for annotation, storage, management and sharing of electrophysiological experiments, and software tool for both offline and online classification of event-related components. 
The long-term building of the Neuroinformatics Laboratory and its infrastructure does include strategies related to expected scientific goals. These are reflected in the selection of ideas, descriptions and experiment procedures, supported by a set of hardware devices and software tools that are in the best case well integrated. In general, smart investments in hardware, software and network services could be the difference between a profitable research center and a small lab. Most researchers and technology-based projects start with an infrastructure that is suitable just for the project. Researchers invest in standard hardware such as EEG caps, electrodes and amplifiers. When a research centers grow, they start to have difficulties with their currently used technologies, security, experimental procedures and overall productivity. As a result, they lose their real competitive advantage. Of course, this cannot be fully eliminated, but still can be prevented by having vital strategies and infrastructure. Examples of such vital strategies and infrastructure are for example continuous implementation of fair data principles, design and implementation of standardized EEG and ERP data and metadata formats, proposal, design and implementation of EEG data processing methods based on machine learning and publication of raw and interpreted data. These strategies have to be supported by underlying technical means and organization processes that facilitate the overall life cycle of EEG data. The experiment planning phase has, of course, also its single purpose part that describes why, what, when, where, who and how to collect, store, manage, share and publish data obtained from a specific experiment. This is a relatively common project specification task. However, its description is important for the Ethics Committee to approve the experiment proposal. Let's now move to the experiment design phase. Its core is the design of the electrophysiological experiment itself. The final settings of hardware and software should be based on answers to questions that each experimenter should ask before he or she even starts. A typical question is, what do we expect to find in the measured data? Based on the specific goal of the experiment, for example, observing reactions of people in various situations or reactions to certain kinds of stimulation, the researcher can then ask the following questions. Do I want to record continuous EEG or ERPs? If we need to measure and record ERPs, should be visual, auditory or even tactile stimulation used? Which stimuli types would be suitable? And how should I put them into a sequence? Should I randomize the order or not? What would be the appropriate interstimulus intervals? And many other questions emerge. Moreover, for both EG and ERP experiments, you might to address the next set of questions. Do I want to keep the whole experiment inside a lab or do I want to record it outside? If I need to measure outside, Muscle activity and other noise will probably appear in the signal, so there will be a need for advanced signal processing methods as part of the design. Some considerations depend on the goal of my experiment. Is the main goal to collect a large set of clean data for other researchers, or do I intend to prove my own hypothesis in cognitive psychology? These questions may also affect the design. Whenever possible, it is a generally good idea to study the problem-related literature as a first step before performing the first electrophysiological experiment. For example, when performing ERP experiments, Stephen Luck provides an excellent interaction explaining not only the principles of EEG and ERP techniques, but also practical rules related to design of ERP experiments. Now we can take a short look on the hardware infrastructure widely used for EEG and ERP experiments and collecting EEG and ERP data. The specific devices will be introduced a little bit later. To make this overview more clear, we can divide this infrastructure into several categories and, of course, to see the whole infrastructure in the picture. The basic category, devices that serve to obtain the brain signal, includes electrodes positioned in EEG caps or within headsets, 
that capture the electrical activity of the brain from the surface of the skull. An amplifier brings the microvolt signals from electrodes into the range where they can be digitized accurately. Converter changes signals from an analog to digital form. For heterogeneous measurements, EEG electrodes may be added with other sensors. The next category is represented by devices that are used for stimuli generation in case we are performing an ERP experiment. A typical example is an oddball stimulator that performs different kinds of visual or auditory oddball paradigm to elicit subjects' event-related response. Although its software competitors are often used, the hardware solution has its advantage when combining and synchronizing a number of signals. Of course, the stimulator has to be precisely synchronized with the amplifier output. Another category of devices is designed for blocking external static and non-static electric fields. They follow the electrophysiological standard isolating data from environmental artifacts such as 50 Hz from line electrical equipment. Of course, we also need devices for displaying stimuli, except classic LCD displays, various LED panels are used. The next device category includes the accessories, such as a PC card parallel port that sends stimuli markers to the amplifier without unwanted delay. A simple switch is used by tested subjects as a control signal response to the stimulation. Devices for storing data are represented mainly by external disks that are still useful for large data obtained at the places without internet connection and, of course, cloud solutions. When choosing software suitable for our infrastructure, one inevitably comes to the question – open source or commercial software? In the world of open source, there are varieties of software solutions that are suitable in principle for EEG research, but of course, there are comparable commercial solutions that might be even better suited. In our neuroinformatics laboratory, we use a mix of commercial and open source tools, but tend to increase the number of the open source tools as much as possible. Now, we take a short and more general look on the software infrastructure for the EEG and ERP's domain. The first necessary software tool is a recording software that captures the signal of brain activity from an amplifier and stores it, usually in some proprietary data format on the disk. In the case of ERP studies, except hardware solution, we can use a software tool for the generation of stimuli. Such stimulation tools generally handle behavioral, psychological or physiological experiments using EEG and ERP techniques, eye movements and reaction time measures. Tools for signal processing are used for continuous EEG and ERPs and incorporate for example preprocessing methods such as artifact rejection or processing methods such as component analysis ICA, time frequency analysis, event-related statistics and moreover several useful modes of visualization of the average and single trial data. Then. A software tool for statistical evaluation of collected data that provides, for example, linear regression or draws a box plot graph is suitable. Online brain computer interfaces allow the user to design a signal processing workflow that tries to decode the participant's intent in real time from their EEG signal and to translate it into commands. The last but not least part of the whole software infrastructure is a tool for long term storing managing and possible sharing of experiment data and metadata. Still, another issue needs to be taken into account. Privacy and data protection laws need to be upheld. Currently, the preferred programming language for developing software solutions in the EG domain seems to be Python, due to its vast ecosystem and community support. A typical hardware and software infrastructure is given in the picture that represents a common ERP experiment. Here, a tested subject watches an experimental scenario and answers to stimulation. At the same time, the EEG signal is captured, synchronized with the stimulation markers and recorded to a computer. Synchronization itself is a critical part of the entire infrastructure. Operating systems and any kind of software can cause unpredictable delays, 
It is the reason why we use hardware as much as possible. This kind of infrastructure is also used within the BCI project Bazil. Now we have a look how general principles of experimental design can translate into specific infrastructure of a neuroinformatics laboratory. Our neuroinformatics laboratory is located at the University of West Bohemia, Czech Republic. It was designed to allow us to perform both laboratory and real-world experiments. For the laboratory experiments, it is practical to get as noise-free and calm environment as possible. To ensure that measurements take place in a quiet place and that the EEG signal is protected from electrical noise, there is a soundproof, electrically shielded cabin. Other types of experiments take into account that some noise is inevitable in more realistic conditions and try to simulate the real world instead. The Škoda Octavia car simulator with a hardware stimulator device for cognitive research is an example of this kind of experiment. It has been used to investigate how drivers behave during a long monotonous driving and to study drowsiness by means of ERPs. It is assumed that ERPs can differ in amplitude or latency when the driver is drowsy. To stimulate the participants, a universal portable ARM-based cortex microcontroller was developed. It includes firmware and optional control software for creating various experiments in which the subject is stimulated by visual and or auditory stimuli. It allows to change default presets or to program stimulation protocols during experiments to get desired responses. In the standalone mode, the stimulator can be operated via touchscreen display or used as a slave device connected via USB. The stimulator is synchronized with recording devices and can be connected to conventional equipment. Another essential part of the neuroinformatics laboratory are EEG caps and related amplifiers. Both professional equipment for laboratory measurements and cheaper mobile EEG headsets are included to support a large variety of experiments. The following measuring hardware devices are used for lab experiments. Standard Brain Vision EEG caps placed according to 1020 system with 19 electrodes and the Brain Vision amplifier. For outside experiments or for entertainment, Wireless neuro headsets, for example NeuroSky MindWave, and related EEG amplifiers are used. The PCI terrain can serve as an example of an EEG experiment designed mainly for entertainment and educational purposes. As shown in the bottom right figure, the PCI terrain users wears an inexpensive NeuroSky headset that estimates concentration level based on the brain signal and adjusts the speed of a terrain model accordingly. To allow ERP experiments both in lab and outside, various kinds of stimulation devices, LED matrix panel, headphones, computer with stimulation software are required. Besides EEG, other measuring devices are used to collect metadata when required. The pupil lab's eye tracker, an audiometer for measuring the acuity of hearing, the wireless biosensors shimmer, for monitoring blood pulse, respiration rate, ECG and GSR are also part of the laboratory infrastructure. Our researchers are working on several projects. Developmental coordination disorder in children, steady state visually evoked potential experiments, driver attention control, body in numbers exercise and wellness health strategy framework, basic BCI system, smart brain C figure in the right corner. Technologies that we are familiar with are Python, C, Java, SQL and EEG experiment tools such as MATLAB, Neural Behavioral System Presentation, OpenSysam, Brain Vision Analyzer 2, Brain Vision Recorder, EEG Lab. Nowadays, the Brain Vive Driven Assistant System for Monitor Impaired People, Bazil, has been developed in our laboratory. As we have already discussed, choosing a software tool is mainly about using either commercial software or open source. In our lab, this question has been especially pronounced concerning tools for stimulation. 
The presentation software tool works out of the box when used with recommended hardware. However, the license needs to be renewed repeatedly, which means additional costs over time. Moreover, the presentation scenarios that have been already created cannot be transferred to another software tool because of the proprietary file format. And for other measuring hardware, the presentation often cannot be used, which adds more complexity to software infrastructure. Python-based open source stimulation tools, such as OpenSAM or PsychoPy, do not suffer from the same problems. Instead, a little bit of extra effort must be dedicated before these tools can become a part of the infrastructure. Concerning the recording software tools, the situation is similar, but most of the time the tool provided by the manufacturer is the easiest choice. It is of course practical when the manufacturer supports streaming to an open format, such as lab streaming layer. If so, we can be completely independent of both recording and stimulation tools and have a shared set of tools throughout various hardware. This would be an ideal situation. For simplicity, we still mostly rely on the proprietary recording software, such as the Brain Vision Recorder or M-Brain Train Smarting. When these software tools support open formats for both streaming and saving the data, we can use any tool for signal processing or online BCI. The Brain Vision Analyzer 2 and MATLAB with Toolbox EEG Lab and ERP Lab are used for signal processing, while NeuroPipe and BCI Lab are used for online BCIs in our laboratory. These and other related tools, as well as tools for storing and managing data, will be discussed in detail in other parts of our tutorial. The following devices are used in our laboratory and are also applied in the Basel project. The EEG amplifier VAMP is used for recording EEG signal and the full range of evoked potentials. The amplifier has two auxiliary ports for measuring peripheral signals like GSR, blood flow and body temperature. This is a reasonable choice for the project because the VAMP is mobile and still yields high quality results. An EEG cap is used for capturing EEG from the head surface. When choosing an EEG cap, many possibilities are available in the market. However, the most common problem is whether to use dry or gel-based electrodes. Gel-based electrodes are the traditional ones, minimize the impedances and typically yield a high-quality EEG signal with a little bit more effort to initiate an experiment. Dry electrodes EEG caps have emerged only recently. Their main advantage is an easy and fast experiment preparation, but the signal quality tends to be lower. Our priority is to obtain as clean data as possible in outside environments, so we have decided to use the gel-based electrocap international. They are made of an elastic spandex type fabric with recessed, pure thin electrodes attached to the fabric. 19 electrodes on the standard caps are positioned according to the international 1020 method of electrode placement. A pure thin cap electrode is used as a reference electrode. A spring clip bag covered with plastic for tested subject comfort is used to hold the electrode in place as a ground electrode. Moreover, one of the main goals of the puzzle project and work in progress in August 2018 is the development of EEG caps. Electrodes and related amplifier that would be easy to wear, comfortable, inexpensive and still would yield acceptable quality EEG to allow good BCI performance. We have introduced the first two phases of the EEG data lifecycle and have familiarized with the experiment design and hardware and software infrastructure used in our neuroinformatics laboratory. And in connection with that, we have also mentioned the BCI project Basil several times. Now it is time to look at the experiment prototype that was developed during this project. The protocol itself is based on visual stimulation using nine stimuli within metrics representing patient possible activities and needs. He or she needs open the door, they are hungry, they need some help, switch on the light, need to call somewhere, listen to the radio, go to the toilet, watch TV or open the window. Of course, this set of activities and needs can be adapted to each patient. 
The experimental protocol contains six stimuli, three rows and three columns flashing in a random order. Then the patient who needs, for example, listen to the radio, focuses and pays attention to the second row and the third column. Focusing attention on one flashing row and one flashing column elicits the P300 component and the intersection of the row and the column represent the required activity or need. The rows and columns flash until we are able to detect the symbol the patient focuses on. Of course, this is a primary design of the experiment protocol. Its variations, for example that only one symbol is presented at a time, are also tested. The experiment prototype has been finally created in Open Sesame. The other parts of the infrastructure that are currently used within the project include the VMP amplifier, brain vision recorder, common EEG caps, online P300 component classifier, MATLAB with toolbox EEG lab and ERP lab for signal processing, Neuropipe and BCI lab for online BCIs, and EEG base for data and metadata storing. However, the recording hardware infrastructure is used only temporarily. Development of EEG caps, electrodes and related amplifier which would suit the purposes of the project are in progress now. The planning phase then includes also time schedule of the project, variety of environments in which the BCI infrastructure is being tested, number of tested patients in home and hospital environment, land and repetitions of the testing and continuous improvement of the BCI infrastructure used for testing. With the infrastructure used within the Bezel project, we are approaching the end of this part of our tutorial. Now it's time for a short quiz. More than one answer can be correct. What should we do before asking the ethics committee for approval? A. Collect some data. B. Create experiment design. C. Define data security. D. Provide and publish first analytic results. The right answers are B and C. ERP experiment design includes A. Modality of stimulation B. Scientific goal C. The component we will focus on D name of journal for data publication. The right answers are A, B and C. Which devices or tools from the following list are commonly used for EEG and ERP experiments? A running simulators b eg amplifier c headphones d signal processing tools e auditory stimuli the right answers are b c D and E. Which device or devices are used for capturing the signal of neuronal activity in the brain? A. EEG cap with electrodes. B. Headphones. C. X-rays. D. EEG amplifier. E. Eye tracker. The right answers are A and D. Which software can be used for stimulus generation? A. Presentation B. MATLAB C. Open Sesame D. PsychoPy E. Brain Vision Recorder The right answers are A, C and D.